Hi there, it's Tim from Digital Signage Explored. Welcome again, we're at the second video from ISC. I'm joined here by Jenny Hicks of Midwich. Thank you for joining. It's okay. Thank you so much for giving us the space to come over and record here as well. Do you want to give us a bit of an overview of Midwich? I think everyone already knows it, but you want to give us kind of a, an elevator pitch of Midwich? Yeah, ever-changing. Yeah. Uh, the Midwich group uh, is made up of multiple businesses, um, all of them focused on product distribution. The majority of those work in specialist AV. And then also broadcast uh, some UC technologies and we do have security technologies as well. Um, it, we span the globe and uh, we're quite a large organization with uh, yeah, just over 2,000 staff now. Just a little bit big. Yeah, just a little bit big <laughs> um, and continually growing. So, uh, And then I guess the newest addition is we have just launched a uh, corporate venture capital arm to look at investing in technology startups. So. A uh, slightly new angle for us that, that launched here at ISE this week. Cool, perfect. Well, again, I, I have to start off by just thanking you for giving us this space because it's wicked. And I have taken some inspiration and we'll be taking that back and doing some of the stuff on the booth. But we wanted to talk about digital signage yeah. in general. And uh, that's kind of what the whole show is about. But it's kind of more about because of your expertise and how Midwich sits in that central zone of all of these different partners and um, relationships. Just talking about how to get started in terms yeah. of finding the right contacts. What's the right process, step one, two, three, of what you need to do to get started. Where do we begin with that? Like if I'm day one, a customer person looking at digital signage and they're like, we've just got approval or funding, or maybe we're just doing our first research, where would you start? So I think um, you've got multiple, many different types of customers that are looking for digital signage. Mm. So there isn't really a very simple answer to that question. Good. Um, so maybe we did define those first. Sure. Um, so at the top end, we've got our high street retailers and mm -hmm. fashion houses and so on. And these guys have huge marketing teams uh, that all ties into their television advertising and branding and so on. These people are experts yeah. already. Yeah. They know how their content needs to appear mm -hmm. and they start the process with a vision uh, of what that is. And I think they're the sorts of customers that are really coming to us with a very defined set of expectations yeah. and we're then fitting the hardware and software around that to say yes we can do that or no that's not possible but yeah. here's how you can achieve it in a different way um, and then we've got probably what the majority of people consider to be their largest opportunity in digital signage yeah. which is those corporate users higher education users who have enough tech knowledge to know that it's called digital signage. Right. Um, and, you know, you might see wandering around the show like this, mm -hmm. deciding what aesthetically works for them and having right. graphic designer or IT personnel level conversation of how do I do this without you know, causing too much bandwidth and traffic on my network? Or yes. how do I do this because I want to be able to run three movie videos within a single screen? And so, yeah. They're the people we are most commonly talking to. And then we have the real opportunity. Right. Or so I think. Okay. I don't believe that our industry is touching the uh, single boutique stores, that one-off hairdresser, the mm. local golf club. Interesting. As well as we could be. Yeah. I think these people are doing it themselves. Yes, they definitely are. And I think that they use a different language to the rest of us. So I guess those top two customers, I don't know that they need any advice. I, don't, I think they're doing things they know right. They, they come with the RFP, yeah. basically. They're like, here you go, here's a list. Let's go find the shopping list and yeah. go down that. Yeah. yeah. I That's so interesting because I've just done some research on this because if you go from an SEO perspective, and this is kind of behind the scenes, maybe not so interesting for an end user, but SEO on digital signage, the traffic isn't that high. No. But you start to progress around those words, there's lots of language where people yeah. are just like, sign screens, screens for my office, yes. screens for my business. Yes. And yeah. you go, okay, so what we need to do, I just banged the microphone there, that's the biggest faux pas ever. What we need to do is address what the language is, educate on the language so it becomes universal. So yeah. people can start going, well, I know what I want because it's this. Um, it's not a USB stick with a TV screen that I bought from home and it's kind of, you know, mounted. It happens all the yeah. time. And it's just trying to find out how do we like, how do you get in front of those people? So this is the thing that you were looking for. Yeah you just haven't quite realized what the terminology is yeah. and how do you get that message across? Exactly. So when I first joined Midwich, I looked after digital signage and IPTV. Mm. And um, I used to 
go out to customer demo and come across this exact language barrier yeah. of I had swallowed the dictionary yeah. of video terminology, yeah. but the people in front of me hadn't. No. So I'm just talking jargon to them, a little bit like sometimes when the IT department talked to me at work. Um, however, I used to think, find a way that my mum can explain, I, yeah. you could understand That's it. That's such a good barometer. It used to be, it yeah. really did used to be. Or how would I, how should I explain this to my mum? Or how would my mum ask me for that? What yeah. words mm. and what labels would she use? I now go the other way in terms okay. of generational and age because that's closer, I think, to the consumer that we're that's dealing with today in terms of that sort of customer base. They're often young. Yeah. Lots of young people have their own businesses. Kind of going in. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, instead of you know, what my mum would have said, oh, you know, the tellies that play the adverts that yeah. aren't videos. Yeah, in the shops. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, or the menus that yeah. you see, but they're on telly. on the screens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 telly menus. Telly menus. <laughs> That's very specific to English as well. It's like you're really condensing it down at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Telly menus on screen and shop. Exactly. I mean, but screen isn't a thing for most people. If you've almost only ever been exposed to a television in your home, yeah. that's what they're all called to you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the same as um, and my mum still has a desktop PC, but she calls the whole thing, even though it's made up of multiple parts, her computer. Yeah. She doesn't call the screen a monitor. No. Um, and that's true of so much of the world. And the younger generation, they work a little differently. So they're not hung up on that's the version I've seen, therefore that's what I'll call your one. Right. Instead, they have looked at digital signage in another setting and thought, I would like that in my boutique or my hairdress or wherever it is that I'm planning to advertise. Yeah. And then they think, how can I achieve that? And they have enough knowledge, yeah. unlike older generation, yeah, yeah. to come up with a plan. That plan usually is... I could make a PowerPoint on my laptop right? because I learned how to do that I've never in school. Heard that before. <laughs> and I'll set it to auto switch slides and oh. loop and then I'll play that. Yeah. And I wonder just how many of those customers that our industry has not reached yet. Yeah. There's a laptop a little bit open yeah. behind oh, the Oh, yeah, yeah. Just like just sleep mode off. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's... That's an interesting challenge because at that scale, it's like you have to have uh, the right product that matches that kind of the scalability. Yeah. Because you, if you're talking about, you know, one side of the story where you've got those retailers or corporate spaces where they're like, oh, we're going to start off with 50 and we'll probably grow to six, 700. Yeah. And you go, okay, this is what you need. You need a tick box of RFEs. If you are those boutique styles, you kind of need to be, it's very price conscious you know, in terms of like, how much product do you need to push in there yes. if they were kind of almost happy with this, that slide deck. Yep. So it's like you want to find something where you go, okay, we're going to make your life easier. You can have your laptop back during the day. Yes. You don't have to like, I tell you what, a horror story. I went to a, an unnamed hotel last night to meet up with a partner and they have a I probably like 30 by 50 foot wide uh, size LED wall. Okay. You, like, it's, it was just massive. And it was playing some Michael Bublé, it was nice. And oh, da -da -da. I know where you were. <laughs> you know I saw Michael Blue play on a very large LED screen as well. Did you see the end of the video where they finished the MP4 and then closed windows no. and then scrolled over and I watched the concierge guy just go D -d -d on the next video? And yeah. it went, I was like, it's crazy where that's thousands and thousands of pounds of installation. Absolutely. And it's all kind of, it stops at the software and so went, oh, I don't know. No one thought about the content. No. So, and yeah. We, uh, me and the partner that was, well, reset partner was just like, I've got to go speak to them. I can't leave this alone. So I don't know did if he did. Did they take that end. well or? I don't think he did in the end. No. <laughs> we advised against it, but it was, um, yeah, it, that educational piece where maybe they, like even the LED installer just isn't as familiar with the CMS or the hardware that's needed to provision it and they go, well, the screen's there. Here's an HDMI cable. Off you go. Good luck. So it's just about trying to find like the right product for the right people. Absolutely. With the right language. Yes. And I think... Um the importance of exactly what you've just talked about. So people would have been wowed by the LED screen. Yeah. Personally, there was no scaling capability. So Michael Bublé was pixelated. Yeah, was, that was also mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think they watched the NFL and all the, the players were like kind of around there. There was a lot wrong like with crabs. that LED screen. Um, however, one of the, the worst things, and 
airports are dreadful for this. Yeah. So you look along, uh, it's usually like a ribbon of a one by, I don't know, two like 6, screens yeah. across going. the check-in desks. And number six or seven will say, uh, loading update two of 20. How have you let this happen? Um, you know, and there's so many ways around it. And a lot of people I think will assume, well, the airport might care about that. And that mm. can form part of my sales pitch as to why they should look at a truly bespoke digital signage solution for them, yeah. not try and use a PC yeah. that's designed to do so much yeah. for something really specific. Um, but actually, those you know, uh, smaller business owners and so on, th this is their reputation. And you would be amazed at how customer perception can change yeah. if they walk in and, well, there's two parts of this, see an error message. Yep. Alternatively, if they're a regular returning customer, what is the purpose of your content yeah. if it's not changing? No, totally. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's the, I mean, I think that's the number one step where you go, what content am I going to put up yeah. there? So why am I doing it? Exactly. It's like if you've got a PowerPoint there, maybe you've got some idea, but maybe that PowerPoint's been there for, I've seen it a thousand times, where the menu's been there, it's the same menu, hasn't changed in six years, and they've got a screen. And then candidly, I'm saying, you don't need a digital screen for this. No. You don't. Like, no. it, it's not, it doesn't have to be digital. If it's a physical print media, fine. Yeah. But what else could you do with that content? Absolutely. And what else could you build out? And I think it's interesting because this whole kind of new generation brought up around, you know, like Apple, and there's some big brand wins. So they get it. They get the value of it. They yeah. get why you would be big on brand and they kind of can seep into that a little more. Yeah. There's a lot as well now in terms of the aesthetics uh, of screen. So yeah. for example, I mean, it's a consumer product still, but the frame from Samsung, um, what a nice way to have technology blend into your surroundings. So even if printed media could do the job for you, or yeah. you're put off by the fact that something's obviously a digital screen. Yeah. There's options actually there. And I do, I think that, that the printed media situation, actually it's, you know, it's been gradually changing for a long time, but it really changed because of COVID. Yeah. And I can't imagine anyone who had a, a customer facing, where customers could walk in business or premises wouldn't be able to now recognize the benefit. And whilst nobody wants a repeat of 2020, no, yeah, um, the reality was that you, everybody had this need to respond quite quickly to change in legislation, yeah. um, change in instruction and so on. And I think that being digital would have solved so many issues, but also it would have been a way to communicate with customers through your store window while you weren't there, whilst yeah. you weren't allowed to be there. And, for sure. Um, you know, if you've created content for your digital screen, yeah. that can also be used online, that you would have had this asset library ready to use in a different way. Um, and if, if COVID can teach us anything, surely it is about preparation and redundancy. And it, oddly, digital signage plays a massive massive sure. role in that. Um, I think also that that customer base that I don't think our industry reaches, the DIY. Yeah. A lot of people instantly assume, well, you know, it's un unnecessary. They don't need the benefits, but they haven't been exposed to them. Yeah. So you, the majority of, of signage software is certainly your own. You mm. have example template. So you might think that you've done a good job with your own design yeah. and it might be absolutely on brand, but sometimes just browsing through those example templates, which are all editable, so you're not starting from scratch, yeah. um, can give you an idea. Actually, that would be on trend for this week because it's the Olympics. Or this think, would be on trend for yeah. another theme. It's that reactivity of being like, oh, we can, and I don't think, I think what people don't understand about the content is it you don't have to do it all yourself. No. There are great software partners yeah. out there that will just go and make that for you. There are content feeds that you can plug into and just be like, I'm just going to go and take social media from my Facebook post, which I've already done the work for and it's on brand. And why not just reutilize that and engage with the customers or put in discount offers? So it's all possible. And you're right, I think it's just, it's again, it's just education around how yeah. What benefit does that add? Um, QR codes, another good one we keep coming back to, where it's just like, if you want to prove the value of something. And have people interact with it. So yeah. they feel part of the ex an experience, even if it is just as simple as getting your phone out and scanning that QR code. Um, I mean, 
So a couple of years ago, we were talking a lot, well, at the final ISE at the Rye, actually. Uh, these, this isn't my idea. I believe the company is called Lucept. They're a lighting consultancy. Mm -hmm. But they talked a lot about digital signage burnout. And I right, thought this was really interesting. So most techies then go, oh, we don't have screen burn issues anymore, thanks right. to OLED. Is it? No, not that. Not that kind of burnout. Digital signage burnout is human beings disinterest yeah. and inability to uh, respond now yeah. to digital content. Yeah. And there were a few really basic uh, rules where you go, why didn't I realize that? When someone's pointing it out to you of, we are so overexposed to 16 by nine in landscape aspect ratio displays with a black bezel at 65 inch or smaller yeah. that we no longer register what they are showing. Interesting. So, in the most part, obviously, yeah. if there's something weird on a screen, you turn you it, you, look, you at look at it. But you don't want to be offensive on the no. screens. You're like, Welcome to our boutique. Here's something really horrifying. Yeah. And this, I mean, they came up with some amazing ideas in terms of how you could design a space so you would use different technologies so yeah. that you had almost like a textural difference to trick the eyes. Yeah. There's LED here, there's projection here, there's a display there. Um, changing up the resolution, which I thought it was really strange, but I actually went and tried it with a few products. How do you mean by changing out the resolution? Like so reducing... you would use a 4K canvas somewhere yeah. and then a separate 1080p. Okay, um, interesting. And, yeah, at different sizes, also changing the orientation. Um, although portraits becoming quite That's common almost, now. That's almost more of a standard yeah. now. Like when you start making content, you're like, oh, how am I going to fit? One day someone's going to invent an app that records both portrait and landscape yeah. and like does some AI rendering of it. And that's going to solve a lot of those problems. But, but everything gets boring eventually, right? Yeah. You, you can fall in love with a song. Yeah. But once you've played it 20 times each day, every day, you, you have to move on to you another have to. one. Michael Bublé. <laughs> Blown up. <laughs> um, so... I think that is, there's more to that as well. So th that talk that I mentioned is was really focused on us as technology providers, mm. but it really applies to branding marketeers as well. Yeah. Yes, we all get hung up. And I think anyone who's, like, I didn't go to university to study marketing, but I, I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they talk a lot about branding and being true to brand and the rules around it, the yeah. color palettes that are allowed and the extension palettes that can be there to support it. Um, you know, we work with a number of manufacturers and some of them go really berserk if yeah. you manipulate their logo. For sure. And, yeah. So this is fine. And I understand the reasoning behind it for consistency. But if that consistency means that digital signage burnout comes yeah, as yeah. a result because it, you're so used to that brand, inhibits the creativity around it. Exactly. And yeah. the content has no impact. Yes. And I think that is why it is crucial to be working with a content management solution yeah. because then you are exposed to yeah. those other examples, other templates that you can use. You don't know what you don't know. No, totally. And I think that's a really insightful thought because I think that is the thing is if you go, well, I'm going to do digital signage, I'm going to do what I know out, if I know what the term digital signage is. Yeah. I'm going to do it out of the box. Here's my landscape screen. The difference between doing that and doing something more creative is not cost. Because no. it's not that much more expensive to turn it that way. It's not, it does, you know, if you wanted to make like a bezel of leaves or something, Absolutely. like it's not that expensive. It's the creative element that maybe not everybody has, but yeah. there are teams out there that can go, I saw this, I went down this trip and I saw this, and we should integrate that into what if we take this kind of curve or whatever it is. It's more about just really putting the effort in because the impact will come. You just have to trust the process and go, it's going to add value. It's going to be an upsell tool. It's going to be something that generates revenue for the business. Yeah. It's all there. It's not just a slide deck of pricings. And that customer type, actually, when you tot up the cost, yeah. it's no different. No. So uh, I, I'm not saying that we have to force uh, anyone who is showing digital content into the commercial screen world away from the consumer TV world. Yeah. I don't mind. Yeah. Honestly, I think in terms of the small inbuilt capabilities of those screens, I'd say my consumer television is probably as good as a, a Samsung system on chip yeah. um, for, for basic digital signage. But when you look at those who have created in PowerPoint or similar, a lot of these businesses aren't using Office 365 for anything else. No. And unless they're a student, 
the cost of that Office 365 each year, yeah. not dissimilar to a digital signage subscription no, for a CMS. Yeah. So and you just think like well, you've got to have a product there so one way, shape, or form. So you're not capable of using his laptop. It might be yeah. a secondhand laptop that you had for years and all that kind of stuff, but it's more around there's just contextually things that you can do like for example, with Sunish Live, you've got player tagging, you've got scheduling. So yeah. you can be like, well, I know on Friday morning we do an offer for coffee in the morning that's free, so let's have the content scheduled on there. And I know I can wake up in the morning, my screen's going to turn on, and it's just going to run the content. And there's even just little things that just ease of life will save you time. Yeah. And when you start valuing your time versus how much time you spend faffing, because the amount of time seeing people go up and they look at the screen, they're like, it's, it's done that thing again. Yeah. You know, da, da, da. post offices are the worst for it. But there's a post office theory that they're all the same but they get like an 18 inch screen. And I don't know what's running on the back of it, but it's, you know, it's from the nineties and it's just a slide deck from like John's Carpentry yeah. that went out of business 10 years ago. It's the version of like pin boards. Yes. They just turn pin boards digital and it's, it's just not the right way to approach it. It definitely has a knock on effect on your reputation. I mean, you know, whether it, it shouldn't, your ability to cut hair shouldn't be determined by whether or not your screen says running update two of 20. Yeah. However, it, but it really, really does. That slick experience where yeah. you spot no errors yeah. surrounding you um, is all a part of a, a sort of luxury element, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, luxury it's, experience. It's, it's a comfort level. You're paying for a service. You want to have an experience in most cases, depending on who you are. But if you think of um, but it's funny because so many of the episodes that I've done eventually navigate their way to human emotion. Yes. It's becoming the try. I might just change the name of the show at this point because it is about driving an engagement with a positive feeling, yes. like an association with yeah. you, who you are personally or as a brand or whatever it might be. Yeah. And, and that's important. And that comes away from the screen as well. So you have to think about the surroundings, like how big does it need to be? Not like how big do you want it to be? Yeah. It's like, this is the right space. This is the right time to send the message. It's all contextual. So going back to the origin, then it's, we've got to think about what content you want to display on the screen and, and why. Think about sizing, positioning, the surrounding, the yeah. feeling of that, yeah. what value you're trying to add. Yeah, is what I'm doing so common that I need not bother? I like that one too. You know, yeah. ha have I seen it elsewhere? Yes. Did I like it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we yeah. can copy. Have I seen it a lot? Yeah. No, don't copy. Yeah. It, try to be different, dare to be different. It's a challenge, think outside the box. Like, uh, it, and it doesn't, and if you can't, go ask like a niece, a nephew, a cousin, an auntie, an uncle, especially yeah. at that boutique, that would be like, I want to do a screen, but can you think of anything that isn't just hanging this on the wall and walking yeah. away? And um, make sure that you are in a position to then be exposed to other options. Yeah. And also, make sure you have a system that can implement those changes. Mm -hmm. And that works right the way through. So if you are a golf club and you run Sky Sports, is it time to put some signage in front of that yeah. so you can add, you know, the sort of L shapes, yeah. um, or advertising banners? We have an L shape at our, our uh, uh, booth, but all we did was we just didn't make it straight lines. Yeah. Like I'm starting to, detest straight lines and digital signage. So everything we make is at an angle or a yeah. curve or something just to breaks up the visual element. It's all going to draw somebody's attention because yeah. they haven't seen it before, it's new. Um, and I think this this is it, you know, you, signage relies so much on people's peripheral vision. Yeah. Um, Cause you, you can't guarantee everyone's gonna be walking square on towards and that there's no other distraction. Yeah. So you, you've got to be able to do something eye cat and it needs to be something that they don't see everywhere yeah. else. And this is, you know, for us, the smaller customers, make sure you're actually using signage software so you're exposed to that and that you can respond on the fly yeah. as changes are needed. Um, don't underestimate the value of a product that has redundancy built into it so that yeah. you're never looking like you've underinvested yeah. or uh, you don't know how to operate it. And then at the top end of the scale, just because the store next door to you or the museum has a 20 meter LED waterfall yeah, tunnel, yeah, yeah. that's not what you should create. No. It doesn't matter how cool that looks. Yeah. People have seen it. Yeah. So they need to come to you and see something different. And there's a whole bunch of ways that you can do that. And some of them actually would reduce costs yeah. um, by using multiple technologies and not just the latest, shiniest OLEDs. Yeah. Um, 
people will pay more attention because you've blended some projection and you've added in some screens. Right. That's it, like research. And yeah. um, one of the things I've said on a couple of episodes so far is you don't have to do all of that research yourself. There are partners that you can go and speak to and they go, well, we have this idea. What do you think of this? Yeah. And sometimes this is coming to, if you can make it down to a show like ISE, that would really add some value. Yeah. Not everyone can do that, you know, but you can check out videos online, just have a look. And it just, it doesn't need to be your life's research, but it can be a weekend of just being like, what do I like the look of? What really fits with my brand, my style, what adds value? And then just taking that to a partner and saying, could we do something like this? Could yes. we do something like this more cost effectively? Yeah. Could we do half of this and a little yeah. bit of that? And yeah, I think I would love to start seeing more creativity and digital signage from that way and, and just kind of pushing the boundaries of what's yeah. possible. Absolutely. Perfect. Final thoughts, Jenny. Anything else that you wanted to cover? Um, I think that moving forward, uh, there's going to be a real focus on sustainability. Yeah, okay. And I actually think that digital signage is one of the areas where we've already started to look at um, what we can do to, to really reduce the energy consumption of the products that we work with yeah, and yeah. so on. And that is definitely going to come become part of it. So I guess rather than speaking to the end users and what I would do if I was one of those, this, my closing thoughts would be around the integrators and gearing up to part of your advice, and that's their role, an advisor, a designer yeah, totally. to uh, that customer base, is to really think about what we can encourage content creators to do to make our screens less of a burden on the environment. Interesting. Because a lot of it's in their hands and not necessarily in the technology itself. How it's used, really, that is uh, a huge part of it. I think LG released a study a couple of years back, over 80% of the carbon emissions of a screen is in the usage. Can you delve into it? <laughs> uh, I've got to like, figure out what that means. So we get quite sidetracked by how is it packaged, what's uh, yeah. it made of, yeah. how how did it travel here. Um, but actually, no matter any of that, 80% of the carbon emissions of the product jarred when you switch it on as the user, uh, the duration you of its life. It. Yeah. Right. So um, does it need to be on after 10 p.m.? Right. And, and we there's come, some laws in, I think, Germany and, and here, actually, and here, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think even in Barcelona, there was, um, I don't know if it's uh, uh, for good, but there was certainly a period of time where all signage had to go off at 10 p.m. Yeah. and it came on yeah. the next morning. And yes, there's other countries following suit, particularly the EU countries. Yeah. Um, now, there's, there's so much more that can be done as well. For example, depending on the type of technology you're using, right. the colors that you use are also quite important. White on an LED has significantly more power draw than any other color. Fascinating. This isn't necessarily the case if you're using conventional LCD right. technology. Yeah, so yeah. Um, you can do some research and have a look at it. And, you know, sim simple things. Now I do a lot of presenting. I no longer use a white background uh, on any of my slide decks. In case when I get there, I'm going to be presenting on an LED. We used to actively encourage integrators to not switch product completely off, to not fully power off. Right. Because, well, the truth of it is systems were so complex and made up of so many products. Yeah, you didn't want to have to have a, a we hard were, we reset. We were petrified right. yeah, <laughs> that if they switched it the all truth off, comes out. it wouldn't all come yeah. back on correctly. Yeah. Um, and it's, one, it's still one of the most common issues with control systems, that yeah. if there's a power outage, that then you have a, an issue because devices then power up at different times and so on and one can't be found and it knocks the whole of the very intricate ripple effect system yeah, out. Yeah, then you have to have a technical to come down and go, oh, and then yeah. you start sticking on buttons and he knows what he's doing, but not everybody does. Yeah, but it, you know, it's, um, you can see why we've reached that point. That is not the case for digital signage anymore. Yeah, no, no. Um, you know, we really are down to single products or two product when it requires a player. Um, and these, you know, yes, digital signage players are designed to run 24 seven, but there's no harm yeah, in switching them off either. <laughs> and it's like, when you say that, it's like they're designed to for the right use case, yeah. which is minimal. Yes. Airports is a good example where maybe you do need to run that 24 seven, but if you're a retailer or if you're like that, you're like, we can turn them off and we can do that completely remotely. We don't need, it doesn't take any of our time. And nope. I think one of the biggest concerns is giving anyone on site on staff, especially if you're multi-location, a controller. So yes. You don't need to, you can manage all of this yeah. remotely and just say to the staff, 
It's behind a, clear, a plastic box. You can't touch it. Leave it alone. It will do its own. And, and we go back to that same using the right products for the job, right? So, yes, your experience is that your laptop takes, I don't know, two minutes to yeah. power up. If you're lucky and you have a MacBook or a Surface, maybe it's 30 seconds. Yeah. But actually, a purpose-built digital signage player is not the same as an Intel no. Nook. So it doesn't need to load an all-singing, all-dancing operating system. It will just power on. It's got nowhere else to go. Exactly. It's going one direction. Yeah. It won't accidentally open up Windows and start playing no. Netflix. It just doesn't have that capability. So switch it off. So switch, switch it, it off. all off. <laughs> it's, you know, and then turn it on the next morning. And I promise you, you will only look at a black screen for 10 seconds. to 20 seconds, yeah. um, which I think that we can you know, we can all do. And you're extending the life expectancy of your hardware, yeah, yeah. which is also sustainable in itself in that you won't need to replace it as often. Worrying for us guys, but still, you know, it, it's about doing what's right now, um, using product that's built for that purpose. A digital signage player has a significantly longer life expectancy 100%. than yeah. a form factor PC. So, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's never going to be upgraded. Well, it's never going to be changed in process or going to be able to do this. Or it's just got one sole purpose and the benefit of that is it means yeah. it's going to be very consistent. Exactly. Um, so I think there's a misunderstanding that the responsibility of reducing our burden on the planet solely sits with the manufacturer yeah. and the logistics partner and that's really not the case no no we've done a couple of different not white papers but articles just around how you can use digital signage in an eco-friendly way because yeah. it's not hard work and it's not additional features yeah. it's just a setting yeah. it's a setting in the player you go i want to do this and then that's pretty much it yeah absolutely um so yeah to the industry we'll do our bit we'll keep bullying the manufacturers into improvements and hopefully the integrators do some research because there's so much cool information out there. Yeah, 100%. And some of these are ideas where you go, why don't we already do that? I know. That's such this is why we condense this into a show like this because it might be a little bit more bite-sized and capable of learning. And then is those little touch points we've had throughout the show is you go, oh, actually, I do want to learn a little bit more of that. Yeah. Let me go and dig into it. Um, is there anywhere we can find you? Where where you like to point to? I, I, I'm often on X, formerly known as Twitter, oh. and say at Midwich Jenny. Um, I can be found on LinkedIn, Jenny Hicks, and the picture that looks like me. Okay. Um, <laughs> that helps. Or, or you can reach me via Midwich, uh, jenny.hicks at midwich.com. I'm available to talk to whoever would like to discuss anything. Perfect. Thank you so much again for coming on and doing the show and doing the booth. Uh, if you would like to learn any more, then do feel free to reach out. Again, um, this has been Digital Signage Explored. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time when we go on to the next uh, episode. Uh, I'll hopefully be a little bit less travelled and a little bit more rested, but we appreciate you coming on. We're trying to make a community of individuals that are learning around digital signage in general. So if you do have any questions, you can find me, Tim Baker, on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find Signage Live at signagelive.com or on LinkedIn as well. Do follow along with this, uh, with the articles on LinkedIn. Uh, we're growing. We've just passed 1,000, so we're really happy with that. And we hope to continue growing and educating you as you, uh, as you carry on. Thanks very much. Thank you.